My lathe is in a workshop placed away from the window and whilst it's tolerable in bright daylight it's pretty dim and as I get older my eyesight gets worse and this becomes more of an issue. You can buy suitable work lights, some are really expensive or you could cobble something together with a torch or something like that but I thought I'd, um, um, being a bit of an electronics chap, um, make a constant current source for a 10 watt LED I've had lying around and um, see how that goes. This is a lowly run-of-the-mill bipolar transistor. We'll be using it as a switch. A small current in here can cause a large current to flow across here. Next up is this power MOSFET. Similar idea, a voltage presented here can cause a current to flow across here, but in this case a large current, which is what we need for the lamp. And now the bright shiny star of the show, a 10 watt LED. However, LEDs like this come with a problem called thermal runaway. When current flows, it gets hot, and its increased temperature lowers its resistance, which causes more current to flow. This process continues until it gets so hot it destroys itself. This is why all but the smallest LEDs need driver circuits to regulate the current, control the power, stop the thing from blowing up. The last member of the cast, the supporting actor, a heat sink. Even though we're going to regulate the current going through the LED, it's still going to get hot. Um, and so is the MOSFET, so we need some way to dissipate the heat. And this passive heat sink is going to be how we're going to do that. I bought a bunch of these LEDs a few years ago, and I don't uh, have any information on them except that they're 10 watt LEDs, so I had to characterize them, which is to say, find out how to drive them and how they behaved um, manually. Turn it up gradually until we get it to light. There you go, so that's just come on, what was it? The threshold is 7 volts. Um, and now we're looking at the power. I've set a 1 amp maximum. Um, so I've just moved it off screen, it's still there, you can see it uh, reflecting there, but it won't bother us when I turn this up. I'm looking for 10 watts. There's one watt. There's 9.6. I don't want to leave it on for long because we haven't got... There you go. So it's about 9.5 volts and 1 amp. I'm going to bring it down. That's all I really needed from that exercise. Uh, broadly, round numbers, 10 volts, 1 amp, 10 watts. So I'll use um, a 12 volt wall wart and regulate it with my LED driver circuit. So we've got the beginnings of a circuit. Ground, 12 volts. What we're going to do is put the LED, I can't remember which way around it goes, don't worry, don't moan at me, here, and the MOSFET, which I'll simplify uh, here. And the idea is we control the voltage on the gate of this MOSFET, and it can turn the LED on and off. Let's set that up on a piece of breadboard and get it working. Right, so I've got the um, MOSFET in series with the LED, the N-channel MOSFET, and when I turn it on, nothing will happen, no current flows. I've currently got the, the, the gate, which is the yellow wire, connected to the ground. Um, since this is an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET, this holds the switch off, but if I just so much as touch that, it puts charge on the gate and makes it conductive. I'll put it back off again and now isolate it. It may come back on, yeah, it's coming back on because charge is leaking in, but you can hold it off. So now we've got um, a small signal which can turn the 10 watt LED on and off. So far, so good, but what we've accomplished is LED switching. We haven't accomplished LED regulation. We're not controlling the current through this circuit. What we're going to use to, to accomplish that is um, a very low value resistor here called a sense resistor. And the idea is that the voltage across this sense resistor is proportional to the current going through it. And we can use that voltage to tweak the voltage on the gate of this MOSFET and in that way regulate the current down to some desirable value which we've learned at 10 volts is about 1 amp. 
We're going to arrange to pull this voltage low by connecting it to the ground through um, a bipolar transistor. So when this voltage rises sufficiently, this transistor is turned on. I can't remember which way the... Um, I think it goes like that. Um, yeah, when this voltage rises to a certain level, this transistor turns on and makes this path conductive, which takes the gate of the MOSFET down to ground. Now, the only problem we have is that when this transistor is not on, the voltage on the gate is somewhat indeterminate because um, this is not pulling it to ground, but neither is it pulling it up to the supply rail. So it's reliant on whatever charge happens to be lurking around, and this is a fragile mechanism of control. So what we do is add a pull-up resistor here, which is quite a high value, maybe 20,000 ohms, um, so that when this, resistor, when this transistor is not switched on, the gate of the MOSFET is pulled up to the supply, which means that the switch is on. But when this uh, transistor is turned on sufficiently, the gate of the MOSFET is pulled low because this transistor overwhelms, by being a lower resistance, this pull-up resistor, so the gate is pulled low. So you might think, well, it's going to oscillate like a mad thing, but what actually happens is it finds its own equilibrium. A certain voltage across here, which is about 0.551 volts, um, settles everything out so it just works. The value of this sense resistor is very carefully chosen and in fact I chose it um, by hand and empirically by measuring the current flowing through the LED I looked at what resistance value gave me the right level of current um, and trimmed a piece of nichrome wire to give me that resistance. Here's the physical realization of the circuit. The LCD obviously here mounted on a heat sink, huge heat sink um, for passive cooling. No fan uh, is going to be used here. Um, I'll have to come up with a cable um, clip here, but I'll wait till I get to the workshop to drill and tap two holes, put a bolt a pair and a bar across there to hold these in. This is the MOSFET power transistor again, clamped down to the heat sink because it gets hot. The gate of the MOSFET is controlled by this bipolar transistor whose base is connected to the top end of this resistor. This is a custom made power resistor. It's nichrome wire um, and nichrome doesn't uh, solder very well so I've attached it to the rest of the circuit through these brass um, connectors which are taken from connector strip, sometimes called chocolate strip. Um, so when 0.55 of a volt is dropped across here, it means 0.8 of an amp is flowing through there, which is about as much as I want to flow. And at that point, the circuit's arranged to turn on this transistor, which pulls the gate of this MOSFET low, turning it off. In fact, um, it all settles to a balance point where the MOSFET is, FET is somewhat on, which is not ideal because that's why it dissipates heat, so it wastes energy. Um, but it works fine, and this is not a power critical application, it's mains driven. Um, so it's off of the, um, the transformer now, the power supply, bench power supply. It's now run from just an ordinary 12 volt, uh, 1.5 amp power brick. This is twice the current we actually need. So when we plug it in, we'll see that it runs. And just to check that it's doing the power regulation, I will measure the voltage across that sense resistor, which is um, just these two brass connectors. Point five six. I've noticed that that goes down a little when the circuit gets warm. i just made this little bar which pinches the flex but it provides um, a robust cable grip and it also anchors this thing somewhat so knowing me I, I think this is probably as finished as it's ever going to get so 
So that's where it will sit. Illuminating will work. Now to some extent, auto exposure is going to get in the way here, but as I look at this work, I can't really see it very clearly. But when I do this, it's a world of difference. It's beautifully clear. And that's what you want. Thank you.